going to my oncologist doctor to find out if the, um, we were trying to see if the pneumonia medication had um, done something with my antibodies and would um, end up not making me qualify for the IVIG or if I do qualify for the IVIG, which means the pneumonia medication did nothing for me. And um, we want to qualify for the IVIG because even though the pneumonia medication does something, that doesn't mean that I don't need IVIG, but the insurance company works that way. So um, there's nothing we can do if that happens. We actually, going on our way there, they um, canceled the appointment. If you can tell, I'm having a lot of brain fog today. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I thought today would be an amazing day to talk about chronic illness and weather. Hi, my name is Kat. Hey, so I'm back home and I'm just laying in my bed because we drove for quite a while and um, I got sick in the car, hence the clothing change. Um, I want to talk about chronic illness and weather. I am really out of it. I'm really tired. It's been raining for over a week. It'll rain for like three days and then it'll stop raining for two days and then rain again and it's been doing that honestly actually like way over a week. Probably about a month now since like a little bit before October started. So it's been raining for a while. There's been like I, as I said there's been breaks between it but the barometric pressure change is still all messed up in between the days that it's raining because it's like planning to rain still. Before I talk about like my feelings and like my personal experience with like weather changes and chronic illness, I kind of want to go over like the scientific part about it so that people can understand what I'm talking about because I've already t mentioned barometric pressure and hopefully I'm saying that word right. But y'all know me, my mouth doesn't work very well. I have it written down on my phone so I'm gonna try to make it look like I'm not looking at my phone but it's probably gonna look like I'm looking at my phone. So today I'm mainly gonna be focusing on rain but as the title of this video um, states it's chronic illness and weather so any weather change can affect chronic illness and it just kind of depends on what illness the person has. My experience is with polyarticular juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. I got diagnosed with that when I was like in elementary school. So I um, I was diagnosed as a juvenile. That's why I have the, the juvenile thing. Right now I think they call it something else. I think it's like endopathic arthritis. Like they took the rheumatoid arth off, blah, 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 off but I was still diagnosed with JRA so that's what I call it still. But anyway, I'm basically going to be talking about my arthritis disease and weather change. I do have some other symptoms that I that are not associated with um, JRA that I'm going to be talking about but we just haven't found out what is causing those particular symptoms and those symptoms would be heat and cold intolerance. So when I say weather change I'm talking about barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is the same thing as atmospheric pressure. I could be pronouncing those wrongs. I know I just pronounced wrong wrong I think. I, I don't really know. I'm out of it today. <laughs> but I'll as always put the words up for you. Basically what that is is the pressure exerted by the weight of the atmosphere. When the pressure is low the air is free to rise into the atmosphere where it cools and condenses and the condensation forms clouds made of water droplets and ice crystals around dust particles in the sky. Eventually these droplets and ice fall as rain. Without the low barometric pressure much of the air and the water vapor within it wouldn't reach a high enough altitude to condense so it wouldn't rain. This is why low pressure is often associated with rain. So it's not really the rain, it's the barometric pressure that is causing the symptoms to spike for a lot of individuals with chronic illness. I have a hard time pronouncing this university's name so I'm going to put it up on the screen, but a study from Tufts University in 2007 found that every 10 degree drop in temperature corresponded with an incremental increase in arthritis pain in addition to relatively low barometric pressure. That means the pressure drops against our bodies so somebody that has arthritis will have more increased inflammation during this time. 
There are so many chronic diseases that are affected by weather changes. Whether it's cold, hot, raining, or snow, somebody's, abo somebody's body is affected by that ultimately resulting in more pain for people with certain chronic illnesses. It's important to know that a low barometric pressure is not the only thing that can cause symptoms for some individuals. And a higher barometric pressure, which is more pressure on the body, can also cause pain. And now, to talk about, to talk about my personal experience with um, my chronic illnesses and weather, I would say that my pain definitely increases when it starts to rain so before, during, and a few days after. And if you're in the kind of weather that I'm in now, there hasn't been a period of time for my body to recover in between the rain because it's before, during, and after because the barometric pressure slowly starts to drop before it starts to rain. And then it slowly like rises as it's not raining and I still feel the change. My fatigue escalates because of my pain because, you know, when you start dealing with more pain than you normally are, you're going to be a little bit more tired because pain's draining. When my pain spikes for whatever reason, I normally sleep a lot more because pain drains you. And it kind of helps, it kind of affects my mental health, which I think is expected because you're sleeping more and you're um, not doing anything. You kind of feel like you're wasting your life. Um, sometimes I kind of feel useless when this happens because I'm, I can't even really watch TV because I can't pay attention because I'm in so much pain. The people around me are also affected because my illnesses are more debilitating. Even though I can't help it, that puts strain on mostly my mother when I need more help around the house and stuff. And so that can cause guilt, which is um, understandable. Like, it's again, it's not my fault. And um, if you have this problem, it's not your fault either. It's just... You know, it's part of chronic illness. Chronic illness affects every single part of your life. And remember, just because you feel something, like a feeling, feelings are not always facts. So even if you feel useless, you feeling useless doesn't make you use, useless because feelings aren't facts. Feelings are valid, but they're not always facts. And you know, a lot of people don't understand the weather change because they don't understand the scientific part about it. That's why I wanted to add it in here um, to help people understand because to a lot of people, weather change is actually good. You know, if it's raining, the only thing that they really, the only really real negative thing about raining is, you know, you might have, um, you might get to work wet, you might have traffic on the way to work, but weather, like rain is, um, it's peaceful and I get that it's peaceful to watch and look at but it brings me so much more pain and a lot of people are like you don't like the rain and it's like it's not that I don't like the rain I just don't like the, the pain it brings um, same thing with like snow when it's been getting um, extremely cold lately and I have been like putting on three pairs of socks lately because my um, feet get so cold they hurt from the cold weather and um, I've even had to like use a heating blanket or a pat heating pad around my feet. I have a really big one that can like wrap around, I can wrap around my feet and that helps. But like, you know, weather changes bring different symptoms on for people with chronic illness. And I haven't figured out why I have heat and cold um, intolerance yet, but eventually I'll find out. We thought it was postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, but that was rule, um, that, they, blah, blah, blah. but I was apparently misdiagnosed with that, but I'm still, I've decided that I am going to get a second opinion on that because I had more positive tilt table tests than negative ones. And so I'm going to somebody soon. So I have appointment with somebody that can test for that, but it's not till like next year. So it's a long waiting list, but I got the appointment. Um, so we're getting closer to more answers, but I wanted to talk about chronic illness and weather because, you know, winter is coming and I live in Texas and so the, the change was like that. Like it was warm, I was outside without like pants on, it was, it was great, it was, it just felt nice to be out there and next thing you know I had to go look for my jacket because I didn't know where it was at and I needed it. One thing I wanted to add into that before I go is that 
If you feel useless, remember what I said. All feelings are valid, but not all feelings are facts. And so just because you feel useless does not mean you're useless. If your body is trying to make you sleep, you need to sleep. And that's okay. Learning to give your body what it needs is part of self-love. And you know, sometimes when you have a chronic illness, you need a little bit more self-love. It might not even really be more. It's just your self-love is different than what other people need because you're sick. And that's okay. You know, if I need to sleep for 14 hours a day, then that's what I got to do. So I hope everybody has an amazing day today or night or whatever time in the time of day it is for you. Don't forget that I love you. Thank you for staying alive. Thank you for choosing to stay alive. I love you so much. Bye.